Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be, whatever time zone you might be in. It's time for the Wix Online meeting 12.4, which means we're in the second stretch of all these triage meetings we're doing at the end of the year. Uh, December 12th, I think. Yes, I think I got the right day here. Um, and really don't have anything to say here except last time we went through 60 bugs, and that got us down to about 310. Um, so if we can do that a couple more times, we'll be good. So if you have guesses, now's the time to drop them in. Um, and I'm going to go with 50, so let's let's roll from here. I'm hoping someone goes 60 and we can try for that. Um, so, without further ado, let's go jump in bugs. Oh, seriously, 52, Bob? It's like right where, uh, whatever. All right, 312. Price is right rules. Yeah, 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 right. So you want to go last unless someone takes your number. All right, first bug, first, these first two are recent. No, the first three are recent. Yes. Add product code and upgrade code to BA manifest. Really? We don't include the product code? No. That seems kind of silly. Hence. Yes. Additionally, product code is not provided during the detect callbacks. Well, no, it's not going to be called during detect callbacks because you have the product ID, which is arguably more useful because that will get you everything. Package um, ID. Right. Sorry, package ID. Package ID, not product ID. Package ID. Um, so, yeah, we could take that in 3x. Agreed. I don't think we could take it in 3.9 unless someone wants to step up and do it, but I could totally do that. All right, yep. moving on. Linker should not allow references to section entries that are incompatible with the entry section. The, this is mine. I thought I'd already filed it, but I couldn't find it, so I filed it. Um, I know we've just discussed it before, though. This is the, the problem of pulling MSI mm -hmm. into, into a bundle. bundle. Yeah, we probably should have better error messages for this. Well, any would, would work, too. Sorry, any. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could be done in 3x, um, at least as warnings. Um, yeah. You, might, you yeah. might add that. This could be done in 3x as warnings, and we could bring it as errors in 4. So I'm not sure we could bring it. Um, does it work? It's silently ignored right now. Probably a good idea to bring his warnings in 3x and errors as 4. That is reasonable. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you could always turn warnings okay. as errors on. So. That's yeah. right. You sounded almost disappointed that I was being reasonable there. <laughs> um, issue with no. heat and project references. Running heat, this, dr, trying to output directory ref be ignored. Exec command. Yeah, this uh, is apparently coming from a, a third-party add-in to do the harvesting like VD Proges did. Oh, yeah, right. Good luck with that. Unfortunately, they're using heat.exe instead of the tasks. Holy cow. Uh, and it is a bit hard to understand. I, 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 added a, I added a question to the bug because I'm trying to see what isn't working. That's I'm not seeing that. Um, I also don't see what's working, so I'm not sure what the actual problem is. So I, I say we... we this is this is something that should have gone to Wix users, not as a bug. This is a discussion at this point. I agree. It doesn't sound like a bug. Yeah. So this is a like, how do I do what I want to do? And it may turn into a feature, but it's not a bug, and we need to go have a conversation about. It. So let's go ahead and uh, kill this bug off and say, yeah, you know, go have a conversation with Wix users, and then we'll come back, and we can come back, and I don't know, maybe we'll figure it out there, and maybe we'll find an actual problem in heat. But yeah. DR does what it does. So if you're not using it right, I can't, I mean, there could be a feature in here, I think. So let's go ahead and kill this bug off and say, for questions, let's go ahead and go to Wix users. Agreed? Yep. I don't, we don't have a resolution for that. We probably should come up with a standard resolution for that. Yeah. Well, that's a general thing we should probably do is... Standardize our resolutions? Yeah. Yeah, we probably should do that sometime. All right. Poor support, and now I think we're back into four years ago. Yeah, right. Yes. Create a C-sharp project, click on localizable, do that, add that, expected should, we should be able to access these satellite DLLs. Yeah, sure. That that would be nice if you could do that. It's a completely reasonable feature that could be done in 3X. Totally should be able to do that. 
Interesting. I don't okay. Know. I mean, right? You know, being able to reference the satellite assemblies. Yeah, should be able to do that. Didn't we already have a bug about this already? Or do we just we're joking about this bug? Um, maybe we're just talking about. Oh, this, this one. Right away. Uh, yeah. yeah. No I files think, or yeah. components makes an MSI hang. It's like right. Um. So, yeah. I guess we could have an error in the if binder. There are no components. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, okay. It could go in 3x. Yeah. I guess. Who does that? But, all right. Feels like a tester scenario. Well, yes. IS extension. Uninstall does not remove login UTF property. Install MSI, verify it was added. It was not removed. Wow. I'm not even sure how you do that. And this is in the metabase. Um, <laughs> IS6, do we care? Sorry, I stopped caring after the second I, so... Right. Um, I say we put this one suspended. I expect this doesn't matter, and if someone wants to go dig it out, they can totally do that. But If this is strictly IS6, no. No, yeah. this is not. Nobody's going to go do it. So let's go ahead and mark that suspended, and we'll let it go okay. away. Two temporary folders created by Dark. Well, uh, 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 no, sorry. Um, um, no tidy, it creates two. One of them which is always empty. Fine. I, well, yeah, we could fix this in 3x. I expect this is in with all the other folders. So, yeah, it'd be nice to, sure, we can clean that up. It'd be one of those bugs that we could go talk about and say, here's how you fix this bug, which the grand majority of it would be, here's how you learn Git. Um, <laughs> so, unclear error message with ext switch. Um, the extension contains definition should recognize the same extensions repeated and ignore one of them. I, I, I'm fine with the error. Um, it being an error to specify the same extension twice, that's just kind of... Otherwise, you'd never know. Um, well, and... and yeah, no, this isn't going to work because there are too many ways of loading an extension. Yeah, I mean, right, so... I mean, it'd be one thing, oh, you're doing the second... Yeah, I mean, you know, if you pass ext Wix IS, IIS extension twice, literally, okay, you could argue maybe we should catch that, but there are, like, three, three or four ways of loading an extension. I don't want to get into the, you know, trying to... Oh, wait, I get this error message. Please remove one of the conflicting extensions or rename yeah. the labels. I don't know, that points you really far in the right direction. Um, I, I mean, truthfully, I would argue that the, the or rename one of the tables, first of all, is bad advice. Well, it, it is a very, very vague and incomplete advice. Um, All right, so let's let we, we could take this on the merits of the um, message. Yeah. All right. Improve the error message, and we can do that in three X. So. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. It this, could be better. Even you just said it could be better, so... Yes. No, 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 absolutely. But we might leave a comment in there about not bothering... I don't know about checking the exact same... I don't know about that part. Certainly not ignoring it. I'd rather get an error and saying, hey, your command line's kind of goofy. What are you doing? Yeah, I don't... I'm, I'm adding this out. Don't bother trying to detect the same... Right. ...the same assembly. We, we do a very good job with the error message. Good enough for me. All right, so crash with Wix tips sent to a read-only path in dark. This is totally... One right after it. That is, yeah, totally a tester scenario. But we should do the right thing, and we should... This is all kind of part of that big fix the whole temp handling in Wix tool set, so... Well, we could take this at 3x. I mean, again, this is another one of those bugs up here. This is a really easy bug, probably. Um, once you get that one, then you could try to do this one, and we could... 
these are good fodder for that kind of stuff. Yeah, if it's set to about that. so but we'll keep those in three X and we can if you ever want to get your you know your toes wet in Wix, here are some bugs that are near these two bugs are near trivial. You could fix them and all that kind of stuff. So Diffix app extension decompiler adds XMLNS attribute. Okay. The decompiler should be equivalent to the original. Well, it is equivalent. Add this. Oh, they're referring to old files. Okay. Original is that it used the namespace. The new one is that it put the namespace on it. Both of these are equivalent. Does it really fail? No, it's right. It, it's These are equivalencies, basically. It's like, where do you want to put the namespace for this thing? Do you want to put it on the attribute, or do you want to put it at the top and then put it there? Uh, I say we punt this bug. This is not this is not a big deal. It's also dark. Like It's completely reasonable. Plus, it's decompiling something that had a diffix app, which means you're decompiling a Wix extension, or a Wix built MSI. So, they're equivalent, even though they're different. Well, but I'm still not... If it fails, that's bad. Right. And they're saying it fails. No. There, that's the sentence right, right below your highlight. Oh. I don't think that's true. I think that's been fixed. That would be bad if that happened still. Because I just did a whole lot of this handling. I cleaned up this handling in Wix 4, the way it's done in Wix 4 versus Wix 3. This is valid. I agree. I'm just saying if All it right. actually fails, that's bad. Right. So... And their explanation is completely wrong, but... Yes. Where did that come from? So I'm going to ignore their suggestion as well. Um, sorry, Candy. This isn't Candy. It's whatever I was feeding her data that was wrong. I know. Um, this should work just fine. So this is, this is the only possible bug, and I don't think it's a bug. Because we're okay. handling for this now. We might not have in 2009, but we do now. 2009? What's the major release of Wix at that? <laughs> they must have been doing three, though. I can't believe they were doing it on two. So I, don't, no. I don't... All right. Dark EXT throws usage message instead of specific error string. EXT, when provided with none assembly f file, throws a generic usage message instead of an error like must be followed by the t extension specification. Correct. I don't think this is true anymore either. I think this has been fixed as well. Because I was checking that error handling and we do this now. Because we have this whole thing that checks for the file afterwards. Um, What's the damn actual error message? There is none. It just prints out usage. No, I mean, sorry. What's the error? The fact that you specify ext without uh, an assembly. Okay. No, I'm... I'm Sorry, I'm frustrated by the fact that... They can't add that to the information? Well, they can't use actual output. They provide the command line and then... Sorry. Yes, and we do have an error now that says make sure this is, that there's an extension afterwards. So yeah. I believe this has been fixed a long time ago. Environment variables are not expanded in a response file. Interesting. That's probably true. I think this is a feature, not a bug, though. It's kind of interesting. Actually, I wonder if that's still true. Um, because we have... Uh, keep popping that window over top. Um... We have a whole bunch of stuff now that expands paths. 
path get full path? That probably will not expand um, experiment variables. Yeah, we have this verify path. So I guess we could expand ver environment variables there, assuming that um, the environment variables that get full path does not. So I suppose we could take this more of a feature than anything else. I'm surprised that nobody's complained about it before. But yep, we could take this. And we could take it in 3x, because it'd be yep. totally additive. All right. Add a scheduled task. Sure. I think isn't, oh, I've seen one. Yes. All right. Yes, we could do that. I haven't seen, yeah, I've seen many bad ones, but not a. Uh, I think you have to go for nice it. I've seen a good one somewhere. Pyro should error out if two or more transforms are end. Uh, <laughs> two indistingu are indistinguishable by an MSI. For example, target product codes are the, have the same transform bits, making meaningless because the MSI will always apply the first matching transform. Oh, I, I, that's kind of interesting. Huh, yeah. Well, that particular case is interesting. Yeah. Um, I, okay. That would be a cool thing to do in 3x. Again, warning the start, error later. Uh, yes, that would be for the best. Yeah. Non-numeric string in numeric column of custom table. This is SourceForge chopping this stuff up. Non-numeric, and they but they did it in their transformations. Oh, well. non-numeric string value in numeric column custom table throws an exception. Okay. I wonder if that's still true because we did a lot of changes around that to make that work much better. I don't. What do you want to do? Do you want to assume it's fixed or not? And keep no, it I'm, I I keep it open to investigate. I mean, we're going to have a like bunch this. of bugs. These are really straightforward bugs for someone to go to. We should keep track of these. Can you track them somewhere, just the numbers, and you send them me later or whatever for these last few? Two temporary folders, two, three. Oh, here, let me another window pop over top of everything. This video is going to have all these black boxes over it. 2301, 2299. No, I want them for... Um, I don't want them to say that they're low effect. I want to use them as, here's a bug that should be relatively straightforward to go find, because you're going to go get an error. I've been thinking about how to get people easy bugs that are really, really easy. Low effort? Yeah, maybe. Oh, I see. Low effort. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Low effort bugs. Well, and they're, the nice thing is, as soon as you test them, uh, this this is you know these are very easy to TDD exactly yeah or test driven tips I guess <laughs> TDF uh, yeah. all right so anyway continuing on light should give a warning when binary suppressed modulation is used for merge modules but not for MSIs I mean MSI there should be a warning stating that the attribute only applies to merge modules and it will be ignored. Oh, that's interesting. No, I see. I, I I know what he's thinking, but I don't think you want to do that because, like, we have like you think about the extensions, right? And the the real reason to use this is like when you have custom actions and stuff like that that need to have you know their IDs to match for their deferred um, deferredness to work because they get right. scheduled by their name. I guess you could do it for binary because that doesn't happen for binaries. I don't know why you suppress modularization on a binary. Why do you do that? I don't know. Oh, UI. Maybe. I guess UI you'd have to do it, right? Because there'd be icons and stuff, or pictures, graphics and stuff. Anyway, I'm not mm -hmm. sure this is the right thing to do, because if you run a Wixlib, and then you use the Wixlib in a merge module, and an MSI, you know, you'd always get this warning, and that'd be really annoying, because you wrote the Wixlib to be reusable, 
for you know MSIs or merge modules. And now these people using it in MSIs are getting these were warnings. You oh, so wait, the only place you could do this is at buying time? Yeah, you yeah you can only do this at buying time. Oh. That's why uh, it says the light. This is why it says light. I don't yeah, think well, we should. Yeah, I don't think we I, should do this. I, I don't think it would be good. And in the end, it gets ignored anyway in the MSIs. I think it'd be more often a false positive in the few cases where people intended to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I, I see. That's my confusion on where the warning could come in. It, have I mean, to if you're, if as long as you're building a product, you could catch this in the compiler. Only if it's in the product. Um, and that's section. the only place where we'd actually want the message. Right. Because I agree. We don't want it in the fragment case because it, right. it's probably going to be a Wixlib that, you know, right. uselessly throw an error or warning. And, and we already have this in the compiler. Okay. Then. For the very I, few cases that it knows. So, yeah, I, I don't think we want to fix that bug. I know what they're trying to say, but I don't think we want to do that. Binder should. Check version specified as default version. Interesting. Should we do this? Probably. Have to break out the MSI SDK to figure out. Um, what am I looking for? A file table. Version. It is supposed to be a version. So. It does need to be a version. I'm surprised. I bet an ice catches this. Oh, uh, we must be in Wix 2.0 space. No, this is 3.0, but... Still 3.0? I'm surprised uh, that there isn't an ice that checks this. Oh, 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 no. No. There's a reason why you could put strings there. Companion, companion files. Companion right? files. Yeah. Duh. So we'd have That's... to check that ABCD is a file. We could do that because we would have the file IDs at that point. Ugh. And that could be kind of interesting, I suppose. So that that's what it is. That's what this yep. would have to be. Yeah, it um, could be done. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I see this more as, you know, ice replacement work than anything, though. I do too, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I want to start the great ice cube melting project, whatever we call that. The thawing project? I don't know what we ever end up calling it. To get rid of all the ices, or to recreate the ices. So anyway, this seems like a reasonable thing to do. Yep. These all came from Jordan, so that's why these are very test type things. Yes. Um, when I run the following that, I get a project tail and the main executable even project. Hey, look, another one. He doesn't reference project. <laughs> this is only the fourth time we've seen this. Yeah. The other project doesn't point. work. Try to run heat out must specify. If I run it from that, I get a strange error. Um, I think this has been fixed, or ah, no, this is about Heat's command line being not so friendly if you order things incorrectly. That's what this is about. So this may be fixed, or we may be able to ignore it. Whichever way, I, I'm I'm ambivalent. Or I mean, we it could be state. Sorry, this may be fixed, or it may work correctly. So I guess it stays open. So we could go look at this and figure out how they want to solve it. Heat's kind of particular about the way you put your command line arguments in. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. I guess. I mean, it, it it is. It is in general. I don't see that. That's you know, horrible. Oh, the error message isn't that great, but yeah. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, see, it tries to get this 
PO, it re reads this as the file name. It does that and it goes, oh, that's the file name. Right, 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 right. Well, so. yes. I guess my, my initial reaction is, well, project would kind of be followed by the project name. Yeah, but order of attributes doesn't usually matter. But anyway, like I said, this may already be fixed. So, but anyway, yeah, so 3x and someone could go decide how well to fix it. Oh, now we're into these. <laughs> I don't know that click is coming back in this way. I think we're doing what click would have provided in lots of different ways. I think click is dead. Well, click once is dead, so might as well kill click at the same time. Sorry, say again? Click through was just a proof of to show that you could do what they did with click once with MSI because they kept saying you couldn't do that. And I was like, no, 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 really, you could. And so that's what click through is trying. It was just intended to prove that. And with the stuff that like Jacob's doing to create the self-updating bundles, you know, to finish that scenario, that's most of the stuff that you needed to get that you want. The features you want are those. So we're going to get a bunch of click through bugs. I'm, I'm inclined just to go click through is dead and open a feature to go remove click through. Okay. You don't sound convinced. You, you actually don't sound like you care that much either. Well, uh, I mean, um, why, why am I hesitating here? Because is there no intention of of targeting that particular spot? That, that lightweight, low requirements. I guess what it comes down to is click-through was basically a wizard. Yep. And I don't particularly care if the wizard comes back, but it's easily replaced with a template if we get to the point where we can do all of the click once stuff. Okay. So basically, do we want to go through and make all this click-through stuff work? Because the key parts of it, the really useful parts of it, well, one is the wizard, if you wanted the wizard which is questionable because it never really got off the ground. But then all the self-update and all that kind of stuff, which is coming in burn. I mean, we stopped working on click-through because we didn't have a good bootstrapper. That's why we went and focused on burn so much. And we needed a chainer. Um, and then here we are. Okay. So, so click-through is dead. Yeah, I think so. I just... Yeah, I don't think it adds that much. It's been out for so many releases and nobody cares. I mean, it's not been that big a deal. I think the big features are the things that we got coming in other ways. Okay. Well, Jacob asked if we should go ask to see if people are using it. And I know they're not using it because it's currently commented out of the install, so you can't get to it because it doesn't work. It crashes and things like that. So it's nobody's using it. It's way broken. It's way broken. The question is, do we ever think we're going to go spend the time to bring it back? And I think the answer is no. It's kind of like setup build. We're never going to do the work to get setup build to be useful beyond the very narrow things it did, and so because we're, we're going to focus on burn instead. Right. The scenarios that we would do here, are, as you said, we're going to focus on making burn better, right? And then we could maybe create a project template to help do this better, things like that. Yeah. So I think this goes away, and I think we get a new feature open against 3.9, you can give it to me to remove click-through. Okay. And clean up all that. So we can start, you know, resolving this as won't fix or close them against that bug or whatever, or that feature. I guess it's a feature, right? That works. Okay. Oh, that wasn't so bad. I've been thinking about click-through for a while. Going back. All right. Heat website clashes on virtual directory. It's entirely possible. Someone should go fix that. <laughs> oh, yeah. did that ever? Did it ever work? I have no idea. I know okay. that it started working even less and less when Elevation came around, and it just hosed everything bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Not not fun. Um, extract files doesn't work on merge modules. Sure. DTF. DTF. And I'm like, sure. Someone could fix that if they wanted. Document a means to determine if Wix is installed. I think I mentioned to you that this was the thing I thought we just did. 
We did, but we never actually documented it. All right, so we should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Here, this key. No, wait. No, no. I did work. What would you do? Yeah, that. He throws argument null exception if you bad command line arguments. Fine. He is not happy about some of these things. Uh, so this is very similar to that previous bug about not having good arguments and heat handling and all that and stuff. Could go in 3x and someone could do the handling of heat better. Uh, Agreed? Sorry, right, I'm catching up. Right. Uh, it's basically more handling the command line better from heat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm highly confident this is already fixed, but well, then we should resolve it fixed, and it'll come back if it's not. No, it won't. That's the problem. Well, then, well, bugs then it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> bugs bugs from SourceForge will never go back to their original submitter. No, but if it's a problem, someone would reopen it because it will be closed. I, That's my point. I, we, I, see, right now it's out there as a possible this could get fixed. If we've closed it, resolved it, and it says it's fixed, someone comes along and says, no, it's not, well, then it will get opened again. Or... Well, but but who's going to do that? Well, there, th those are two different things. Nobody cares is entirely possible. Um, but the idea that someone will magically come back and say, no, it's not fixed, no, no one's going to... No, they'll I mean, probably open a new bug. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying it's, it's a slightly... We have the bug report... And for stuff that's easy to verify, we should do that. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side of the, if we think it's fixed because we did all that command line work, I tend to toss it in the bucket and put the proof on the other side. But you want to put the proof on our side, that's fine. Mostly because I don't think we get proof from the other side. Uh, and if we didn't, that's where my argument of the, and if we didn't, that means they don't care. <laughs> well. But that's fine. But, that's fine. So but I do care. You do care. I care just enough to keep the bug open. Well, and you're getting it in three X, so I'm I'm fine with yep. that. Two two four six. Two two four six. Two. Oh, you got it already. Oh, and there's a feature. How about we do this feature? Uh, I vote we take this in three nine. And I'm not signed in. Um, I'll take that later. Can we open it? Hold on. So. I will open it and assign it to you. That's awesome. Um, you, I'd like to have silver, yeah, I don't care about silverlight. It's dead. That must be extracted, modified, yeah, no, I don't care. This come, yeah, silverlight apps are dead. I guess we waited long enough to bet that this technology would die. I, I, I'm, no. Sorry, all you silverlight fans, silverlight is dead. Carry on. So, no. Currently, custom action points to a class, however, it doesn't include, inherit from a base class. Wow, crazy use of um, polymorphism, I guess, to do all that. Uh, I don't care, but yeah, I suppose that could be done in 3x. Not against it. Yeah, agreed. That could be done in 3x. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. We might fix the title, because that should be SFXC, I think. Not oh, SFC, yeah. just so nobody's confused. I use SXLT from heat. Good, good. That's the way to do it. And you want to put code in it. Yeah, well. Usually code in things is bad, but this is your own. So probably would be reasonable. Yeah. So, yeah, I suppose we could allow that, right? Could be done in 3x, right? I I don't write script in my XSLTs, but sure. Dude, we're talking heat, XSLT, and they want to add code to it. I absolutely do not care. Yeah, but you're not against it if the feature was done. Because it's basically a feature of XSLT that we've been out, an extensibility point XSLT. I'm not against it, I guess. Only philosophically. 
philosophical, yeah, but not based, not of scripting SSLT. It's the other things that you're <laughs> against. No, 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 the whole thing. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. Hidden property log to that works quite custom action. <laughs> quite <a> tech. <laughs> yada yada yada. Sorry. It's quite the custom action, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I like that. On the last thing, do you have it as a command line option to heat to enable script? No, I, I'd either do it or not. I mean, it's, the XSLTs aren't coming from the internet, so I think it'd be fine if we enabled it for always. Uh, back to this. Uh, quiet exec. We still log that. This has been fixed. This has been fixed. Because we had this come up before, and it was really bad. This has been fixed. I remember being a little bit horrified when this came up. Okay. I'm trying to f e -X -T -C -A. I don't like some of this. I'm going to look real quick, but I'm pretty certain this has been fixed. QTExec, that's what the file's called. It was. There's no WCA log call. Right. Yep. That's what we did. We removed it because there's no way around getting that done correctly. So yes, yes, this has been fixed. Okay. That's what I. Yep. Allow product version to be specified at length time. This is now supported. You added support for this earlier. <coughs> yes. The multiple buildup of a version from all of these things is not, but that's okay. That's a different bug. Yep. Allow harvesting of by hierarchy when harvesting directories. Huh? Change the source number. Okay, sure. Someone could add the feature to heat. It's another heat thing. I'm like, yeah, sure, you could do that in 3x. I don't think it'd be breaking. All right, I'm still not seeing what the difference is. It's it's the way that you control the root of it. Oh, man. All right. It basically comes down to if you don't get your tree laid out just right with heat and then do one pass, if you try to do multi passes, it just becomes a real mess. And so these people aren't doing one pass. And anyway, that's that's that. Um, variables and localization strings. Is this supported? In, oh, variables and loc strings. We've covered this before. There's a bug that we either got rid of or we did somewhere else. Right? This, cause this sounds very familiar. I do not want to pre-process Wixel files. No, 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 we're not going to do that. So it's not this. I think you can <clears throat> use, but you can use binder variables yes. now in Wixel files. And you can also use other look variables. And you can use other look variables. So I think that's a better way of handling this. Yeah. Those two features will get you the ability to get what you want. Ability to add a group to a group. Sure. Enhancing the group custom action would be a fine thing to do. That could be done in 3x if someone wanted to go about doing that. Wix out capability to store mirror MSI capabilities. Oh. Um, yeah, we're not fixing. I'm actually getting rid of this feature in four. So. What, binary work sets? Yes. It's, we're not doing these things anymore. Ugh. Ugh. There are better ways of doing this. What with melt and things like that. We just need to solve this problem at a better place, not from Wix outs. Because so you don't get all the file information right. There, so these are going away. So this we're not we're not going in this direction at all. Cool. Uh, you already took it out. Time to go. Yeah. Well, I, it's out in four. You can still do it in three. But we're not changing binary outputs in Wix three. No, probably not. Tools Wix. amuses me. I'm curious if it's true. 
we not check? Like, this is really awesome. Like, <laughs> the fact that you can do this currently, or that you might be able to do this, is pretty awesome. I don't know if we fixed it or not. Do you know? Uh, I, I do, in general, agree we should clean up variables in the preprocessor. Um, there's... It, it, it's too easy to do things that are a little a little funky. You can do things correctly. You know, like have a nice ID equals quoted string rather than um you know, sometimes they're optional. So I'm I'm definitely okay with additional cleanup there. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if we do already now. No, it doesn't look like we do yet. Looks like we'll take anything. Yeah, looks like we'll take anything. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Cool. It's a real bug. 3X. Uh, probably a warning in 3X, an error in 4. Yeah, I suppose. Just saying. All right. Heat generates prohibited empty description. Cool. So we could fix that in 3x. I know it says 4, but it could be fixed in 3x. It says 4? Yeah. Oh. There's a comment. Uh... Heat does not handle version independent prog IDs correctly. Two prog IDs under one class element. Duplicate and registry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that looks like a heat bug. That could get fixed. So yeah, that could be done in 3x. Remove okay. minor number restriction. Generate no. build error if minor exceeds 255. That's what MSI says. MSI says 255, 255. It's theoretical. Uh, as practical tests... No, it's not theoretical. It's documented. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. If you want it, if you want that fix, go take it up with the MSI team. Have them fix it. The easily doc. fix the doc, yeah. Yes. If I wonder if there isn't a bug in Wix UI with 64 bits. Oh, I don't know. Oh yes, this is. This, this is, is a, real. This is real. All right. Seems like something that should be could be fixed in 3x. Should be could be. Would uh, be someone, probably. Uh, it's not going to break anything. Well, probably. Set up XC. Click through. Yeah, this is dead. Dead code. We don't do that anymore. Set up XC is ca our maintenance. Yeah, we don't do that either. <laughs> Eric St. John, that's awesome. This is, these bugs, I think, is how we got Eric to join and actually help us work on Wix. <laughs> We're like, what are you doing with this thing? I'm installing the Surface Table. What? Anyway, um, it would be great if the event source extension supported log size. Sure. It'd be great if it did. I don't know what that means, but someone got it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know how hard it is. I assume it's, yeah, it's directly by the registry, so it's not even that hard. This is another one that was not too hard once you figure out how to do the Windows-isms to it. All right, define var project name assembly identity constant. Oh, seriously? To use why what is how do you use that assembly identity um, I suppose it could be done it could be done tricks I don't know how you use that I mean, what would you use that for you put it in the registry somewhere to look up okay well if that's true then can't you use the binder variables now for that instead that seems like a better no. use if that's what you're using it for which that's reasonable what you just said, then it seems like you would use the binder variables. Now, granted, the binder variables that exist now did not exist in 2009. 
So it seemed like yeah. maybe this is better solved that way. <clears throat> um, well, now I'm interested. I don't know. I, I'm assuming the assembly identity is the, you know, long thing with commas and public key tokens and whatnot. Um, interesting. So this is one of those where I'd say, no, use the, um, I know he's not going to come back to us, but we say, use the binder variables for this instead. And if someone comes back, I've never had anybody ask for this since. Like, it's never. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with. Saying use the binder uh, variables. And if for some reason binder variables don't work, then we could look at doing this. Do we have a binder variable for the assembly okay. identity? Uh-huh. OK. All those assembly bits and pieces you can get. Tables with greater than 32 columns show poor error messages. Cool. No, this guy. Is... What? Oh, <laughs> you're funny. Thank you. Uh, yeah. If this is still the error message, that's a pretty crappy error message. It could be fixed in 3x. And this is another one of those bugs that is perfect for something to go look at. All right. Recursive linking of merge modules. Automatic recursive merging of merge modules dependencies rather than have to manually track down dependencies and add merge elements. Sure. I don't care, but sure. Uh, this is well. This is the module dependencies, module dependency table. Yeah. Theoretically, lists all the merge modules that you need. Yeah, I, I don't care, but yes. Well, yeah. I also don't. I not only don't I care. I, I don't. I don't know how you avoid the And they even mentioned it here. You know, where you have a path where your merge modules are found, and they help you if you, you know, have multiple versions of merge modules. Well, that should be handled because there's a version number and the dependency information. But anyway. Well, yes. But your your store, your merge module store, now needs to be able to handle different versions, which means your automatic search is now, um, you know, has to go trolling the entire tree. No, it has to do that anyway. It has to do that anyway. It has to open all the merge modules to do that already. Yeah, that's why I don't want it. Well, that's, but yeah. Anyway, so it's not a bad feature if you come up with a good way of implementing it. All right. It's not as simple as just, hey, look, whatever. There's a whole lot of things to think about. I have very little interest in doing such feature, but, you know, if someone wanted to do it and it wasn't horrible, could do that. I mean, it's not that horrible, but yeah. Allow document in XSL file. Sure, this is very similar to the scripting thing. If someone wanted to do that, they could do that in the 3x. One more extension method or whatever that is. Read. Could sure. be done in 3x. Could be done. Provide access to directory property without trailing slash. No. This is MSI. Some configuration utilities require pass to be provided without trying slash. Put a dot on the end. IS7 app command create app physical pass set the directory property to 60. But the created app is not valid and causes errors in IS snap in. Well, they just screwed up, didn't they? Generating a command to be pro They want a custom action to trim backslashes or something. Right. I suppose it's not horrible. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to guess into the, you know, I, man. How do you do this in a way that doesn't suck? It actually wouldn't be horrible if, if you know, after cost you know, finalized. Cost, yeah, after cost finalized, you know, there's a 
a nice little table driven custom action that says okay for all these properties you know create these new properties with no backslash at the end I guess not horrible. I guess I, it, would, it would go with our you, I wonder if you could do that for all your properties like after cost finalized do all these stream manipulations on all these properties that's probably it's pretty close probably UI is it, probably yeah. not perfect it's probably not perfect with UI but it's close yeah all right, it could be done in 3x, something like that. Yep. At a certain level, it's like go fix it and something like that. Well, yeah, Jacob, the CA to do that is probably just a dumb little XE CA, so there's no no processing. No, yeah, no point where they could wrap and fix their their own stuff. Yeah. All right, unable to disable queue limit feature web app pull IS6. Another IS6, eh? Uh, it might be in four. Um, oh, it will require schema change. Oh. Oh, bummer. Well, that could go in 4X. Okay. That's too bad. We got that wrong. Oh, well. 4X. Where are we oh, oh, I see. We have it. It's just wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, it doesn't allow you to go high enough, so. Could we yeah. fix in 4X? Update docs to be more specific with respect to default values. Right. So current chum does not say <laughs> I what bet the defaults are. I wonder if that's true. Well, we've been getting better about saying when, what the specifics are in uh, in the documentation in the paragraph. Right. We're adding that a lot. Uh, this one, no. This one? Oh, yeah, this one, right. This particular attribute, no. Yeah, this is pretty sure attribute, attribute defaults to, yes, and that means this. Um, I don't know if we want another column. That would be kind of tedious, but it could be done. Uh, yeah. I, I, the, problem, the problem really is that we don't often have, well, I'll say often, a lot of times, Take that for whatever it means. Um, we don't have a static default. That's true. That's actually very default true. Something different based on another attribute value, or you know, what the parent element is, or whatever. That's true. Uh, so, so even if we somehow required the the XSD to include a default, half the time we can't give a real default. without adding a paragraph, which is what we end up doing in the remarks. Yeah, which, you know, we do almost everywhere anyway. So what do we want to do with this bug? Say, true, but because we've been doing more and more of this kind of thing, it's not easy to do that anymore, so we don't? Well, again, for this particular attribute, it doesn't actually say. Um, so. Yeah, we should fix this attributes paragraph. Which one is it? Which one? Uh, impersonate. Really? That's not good. That should have a really good description on it. Oh, well. Because it's yeah. important. Right. <sighs> yeah, fair enough. So, so we should fix oh, that one. Oh, impersonate value. Yeah, okay, so we should take this bug. All right, fine. We can take it in 3x and... I don't know if we have a more... I don't know if we have anything more systematic than what we're doing. No, I, I don't. I don't think you can. The other, I mean, at a certain point too, it's like it. It would be a huge amount of work to add this column, you know, a default value column. I just, I think we're we're better off, you know, kind of spot checking to see where the text should be more descriptive. So, all right. All right, so 3x for this, and we'll just keep doing what we're doing now rather than adding another column. I think back in 2009, we had less of that jumping around, and it really was just one value, but we've been getting more and more smart, so you can write less and less code, ideally, in right. Rex, and that's the idea. So, yeah. All right, so we'll take this in 3x. Yes. And we will not be doing anything systematic. 2105. We should take 2091. 
two oh sorry, what did you oh, say? Oh sorry, you're you're I'm ahead of you. Never mind. Whoa, slow down there, Chief. Um exception icon is valid is not valid or wrong type. Whoa. Click through. Yay, we can make that one go away. What is it about this that causes it to be formatted in this gigantic font? Anyway. So that can go away. Click through. Product version unable to be a loc variable. Ah, uh, this is not true anymore, right? This is fixed? This is fixed. All right. Uh, project bin configuration is always created inside Votive. Yes. Yeah, this is, I've seen this happen in Votive, and I actually it does it to all of my projects, C-sharp and everything included, which is really annoying. I don't think... I don't think this is an um, issue outside of Votive or outside of Visual Studio at this point. Do you want to keep it to go verify it, or do we go punt it? Hold on, so... I don't... This is I I've seen this happen in Visual Studio. It always creates this bin folder. Even on C sharp projects, it does it to me. Which annoys me. So I'm sorry, I'm so I'm not grokking what this guy is saying. Um, even if even if you change the output path, you'll still get a bin configuration folder. Well, then what could we possibly do about it? Well, I, like he thinks it's us. I think it's more of a Visual Studio thing, but I mean... <clears throat> Put it in the primary non-conditional. Now when it opens, you no longer have that bin configuration path being created. I think this is a votive thing. This is not a MS build thing. I think it's a votive thing. I agree with that. I'm just so we can put it in votive, and someone can look at it, or we can go, yeah, this is Visual Studio behavior. Either way, I right, it goes in votive, and someone has to go figure out if this is really a Visual Studio behavior or not. Because I've seen the same thing with C sharp projects, and they annoy me. Because the Wix, you can see this actually at the Wix project, because we move all our build output to the build directory. Yeah. And then you open up your project in a solution, because we're starting to be able to do that now that we haven't in the past, and you end up with all these little bin and OBJ directories all over the place, even though they're all empty. <laughs> because the actual build output goes into the build directory. And Visual Studio's project still creates those things. So I don't know if this is a votive thing, can do anything here or not. Well, I'm, uh, again, I'm, for some reason, I can't interpret what this guy is saying. Um, but it seems to me that he's saying if you move it or remove the output path property from you, all those, you know, the, the configuration property groups, mm -hmm. then it works as right. you'd expect. That's right. Okay. So, so it, it's, it's possible that it's in votive. Yes. Um, or it's deeper in Visual Studio. I don't know which. Or, or it's deeper in Visual Studio in which, yeah, there's nothing we can do. So. I'm okay with keeping it in votive, I guess. All right. Fragment ref element. No. <laughs> Please do not remove fragment ref element. Transparent and effective preware common things. No, I'm still not. I don't think we should bring it back. We haven't been missing it. And I still think we should add the the refs that we are missing, not bring back fragment ref. Because what happened when we had fragment ref was that people added fragment refs to everything, and it was a mess. I think it led us down the wrong path. So. Um, I, I am. Uh, I think we we still need some additional reference. I'm fine with that. If people find the references we're missing, we should add them. But it's not fragment ref. Um. 
probably not. The the hardest is is there are, um, uh, for example, a reusability thing where you keep a bunch of uh, searches and uh, launch conditions together. Right now, a lot of these things don't have IDs. No, the searches do. The, the searches do. And the, and we've talked. We should, if that's a real thing, we should add a condition ID and a condition ref and call it good. Yeah. Problem solved. Like for that, I'm totally down with that. We should do that. Yep. So, no to this bug and yes to the condition refs that, or to the refs that we're missing. That works. Okay. And like Jacob said, you can use your reference though. Well, and, and there are workarounds. There are hacks. I, I don't like the hacks. I would rather us go after the things that should be yes, fixed. Yes, I agree. Uh, I, yeah, I, I see why we got rid of it. I, see the I remember the days when we had it, and it was really bad. People were just throwing them all over the place, and there were duplicates, or it was just like, stop. stop. It means you don't understand what's going on. You're just doing fragment riff everywhere. And so that is true. I, I, the little bit of forcing people to understand a little bit more, I think, is a good thing. Love yeah, this is the localized project references. Um, we actually have them, kind of. We don't. What we don't have is, um, like a wildcard, a way to pull in every single localized reference. But like, you know, you can do. Uh, yeah, var dot project name dot target path dot enus to always pull in the English. Yeah, all right, this is interesting. We could do this. May I think this is additive. I think we could do this in three x. So we could do that. Okay. I and mean, we could do it in three x. Let's do this one real quick. About five after, so we're gonna finish because we started a little bit late. For SQL string statements currently, we find you must define just one attribute applicable for install, rollback. Oh. Whoa. So you want to have the same string execute multiple times on all these different ways? Define multiple SQL string element attribute settings, specifying the installer sequence you want it to be applicable for. I don't understand. Oh, <clears throat> I see. Using one script for both rollback and non-rollback scenarios. I don't understand that. You, you can actually have a string that would be useful for both rollback and non-rollback. That's what he's saying is, <clears throat> basically, if you have multiple strings, you should be able to get multiple hits, multiple matches for a particular combination of actions. So, you know, say you have, and I'm going way out on a limb here as far as my Oh, database. oh, oh, I see. No, you want it to be, yeah, you want it to be the rollback of an install, but the install or the, the non, oh, jeepers. <laughs> yeah. Picture work in that. Actually, I, I see where it is. It's it's basically you want rollback on uninstall and execute on install. So it's like you want these two, or you want these two. Uh, what he's trying to do, I think, here is actually normalize his his SQL statements. He wants one instance of creating this table. And you know whatever the combination of of rollbacks and and executes are, yeah, that yeah. It, it makes sense. I, it kind of makes sense. It's the long way around, but it makes sense when you think of it as these two things go together. Right, right. And then these two. Yeah. Go to on separate strings. It's unlikely you put all of them on the same string. Right. Exactly. That seems unlikely, but I, I don't know how you'd write an XML. XML. <laughs> A SQL string that you want to run. I guess it'd be run it all the time. Which uh, you run on rollback. It's like, well, what does that do? I don't know what that does. No, really, really, put the master database back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeez. 
Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is. I see now. Tricky. Tricky. Okay. Yeah, we could take that. Probably could take it in three X because it's just a matter of putting the. I hope that's a. Oh, I hope that's a flags field. If so, this is straightforward to do in three X. If it's not a bit field, then it might be a breaking change. It might not. No, because it's, it's probably. It's probably an attributes column. Anyway, it's a matter of going to figure out where it goes. Lives. It's probably an attributes column already. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I think on that one, we're going to end on a high note, because that's actually an interesting feature request. Um, and that could go in 3x, as long as it doesn't end up being breaking to anything. Yep. All right, we started at 3.12. That's what I remember, right? One, yes. two, three. Oh, too far. Oh, one, two... Oh, just two. You got to that already. Wow, that was fast. So two more. 257. Wow. Wow. Wait a minute. Did that add up the way I think it did? Wait. 312. We're actually at 257. 55 bucks. Right? My math right? 312. 55. 55. I can't believe you beat me. That's not even close to fair. We didn't get enough people voting. And Jacob, because he wasn't here, we gave him 42, so he's definitely wrong. Um, no. <laughs> um, cool, 55 bucks. That's not exactly 60, but I think we're going to stop here. Um, and we'll roll on on Tuesday when we have 12.6. Agreed? Agreed? Works for me. All right, so my little thing that I want to see down here is I want this arrow to go away so that we only have... Oh, it is almost gone. Look at that. One more page, and it's going to be. We'll be down to. We'll be down to ten soon, which means it'll just be this little bar here with these little grayed out things. Woohoo! That's exciting. Technically speaking, I think they should be grayed out right now because you can't go beyond. But whatever. Minor issue. All right. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, we're all good. Another fifty-five. So, let's say we did fifty-five two more times. Oh, that's actually a good point. Jacob points out that we could go through all the click-through stuff and just nuke them. I'll do that. That would be awesome. Um, although it does reduce the satisfaction of having the bugs disappear when we're there. You know, it reduces our count for a particular day. It'll be the off count, but it's still probably worth it. Um, so, yeah, 55. So let's say we were to get another we have just next week. Is that correct? Just next week. So two more, two more meetings next week. Uh, yeah, 246. 12.6 and 12.8 and if we were to do let's say 100 bugs in that point we would be in the mid hundreds yep. oh. and if we could actually get our resolve rate up a little more then we could even be like in the low hundreds I don't see how we get under 100 but that would be freaking awesome <sighs> maybe we'll do it again New Year's Eve we'll add a meeting on New Year's Eve the 31st if you're still around Bob uh, yeah. Yeah, because I've been disqualified from working on Christmas Eve. My family all was like, "No, we can't do that." So, um, so maybe the thirty New Year's Eve, which is nothing special here, uh, we could do that. That would be pretty cool. I would love to get down to very few bucks. Anyway, turns, that's the end of the week. There's no no click through, no additional click through bugs. Oh, uh, bummer. So yeah. all right, that means we actually have work to do for the remaining two hundred fifty-seven or whatever it is. Right. I'm do another refresh here. I don't know if you got rid of them. Not no, not yet. All right. So I take it those guys take more typing. Um, yes. So, yeah, this will be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we'll be in the hundreds by the beginning of next year. I'm pretty confident of that, right? Yeah, definitely. 50, 50, oh, yeah, we'll be in the hundreds. These four years ago bugs aren't that bad. So, anyway, have a wonderful rest of your uh, morning, afternoon, evening, and then uh, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, have a good night. Bye.